watching KWQC TV, making a difference in the Quad Cities. Live from the Quad Cities with Morgan OTA and Kyle Keel. This is Quad Cities Live. Today on QCL, after school activities, Steam Kids Sensory Stands. We'll show you what's new at the Rock Island Public Library. And it's one of the most popular Halloween movies of all time. We're talking Hocus Pocus, how you can experience the film on a big screen with a live orchestra. And later, the Eclectic Market is here with all the oddities and unique items you need just in time for Halloween. It's Wednesday, October 23rd, and you're watching Quad Cities Live. We've made it to the middle of the yes, week. Yes, we have. And we're so glad that you could join us today. I'm Morgan OTA. I'm Kyle Keel. Scarecrow Row is one of the area's favorite Halloween traditions, and it's back again this year at Geneseo City Park and joining us now is Zach Sullivan with the Chamber of Commerce in Geneseo. Zach, thank you so much for coming on again. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Appreciate you brought it. a few friends with yeah. us as well. So it's uh, coming up this Saturday, October 26th, a very popular event in Geneseo. <laughs> uh, Morgan's made a new friend here. So uh, tell us all about it because this is more and more popular every year. Yeah, so this is the fifth year yeah. of Geneseo Scarecrow Row. It was an event for Halloween that was kind of created during the pandemic oh, yeah. so we could socially distance. Okay. It was a big hit because we had 3,000 people show up wow. and we've had thousands of people show up and most importantly trick-or-treaters to come out and enjoy the scarecrows and trick-or-treat at the scarecrows yeah, kind of like know. a trunk or treat oh, where yeah. businesses will come out and they'll set up a scarecrow and uh, kids can dress in costume and do a little early trick-or-treating at the city park. Wow well we are seeing images of different scarecrows from years past and uh, honestly Zach I'm a little surprised like some of these are really good they're, they're really good. well very done. Very creative. Look at that. Is that Edward Scissorhands? I can't. It looks my like my it, yeah. monitor is very far away, yeah. so if it's not. But that looked really good if it was. One of the great things about Scarecrow Row is that it allows people who are participating to really let their creativity show. Yeah. Absolutely. And so we partner with Smith Studio and Gallery, which is a local art gallery. Yeah. Yeah. And David Smith does so much to help us with this event by creating the Scarecrow frames to really drive this event and make it more of a family-friendly and user-friendly uh, participation event. Wow. Well, roughly how many scarecrows uh, are set up? Did you did you mention yep. that already? So uh, last year we had 82, and oh, this wow. year our goal is 100. There you so go. So we'd like to see 100 scarecrows in the city park, and we already have at least four who are going to appear. Yes. And I am just amazed because it gives you the information on who the artist is. This was done by a nine-year-old. Yeah, uh, Macy Siebel. Uh, she's the daughter of one of my uh, colleagues at City Hall, of Paige, our city clerk. Yeah. And um, her and her grandmother, Macy and her grandma, created <laughs> I love this. the band Kiss. Uh, it's so amazing, you know, and so these uh, four scarecrows collectively won first prize at last year's Scarecrow oh, Row. this was from last oh, year. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. And, and okay. so they actually donated these scarecrows to be a part of the Scarecrow Row in the future. Oh, sweet. And, okay. And oh. so, um, yes, we do have all four members of KISS in the Geneseo Chamber office staring at us all year long. Oh, all uh, but year. <laughs> but, but, but once a year, we get to uh, we get to bring them out and uh, show them off for Scarecrow Row. Wow. I mean, it's my favorite rack group, KISS. You know, I've got Ace Freely. I've got Peter Chris. Yeah. Yeah. and all the other members, and they're going to be on full display at Scarecrow Row this year. I'm oh, glad perfect. you named them and you didn't ask us to Yeah, name I, them. I know Gene Gene Simmons. Simmons. That's, <laughs> about yeah, that's, that's about it. That's yeah. where it ends for me. Okay, so I see a ribbon on uh, this one here, so most uncommon. Uh, talk mm -hmm. about the different prizes that uh, these Scarecrows can win. Yeah, Is that's like a, an overall? Yeah, winner? that's a great question because there is a lot of different prizes available. Okay. First off, every Scarecrow earns a ribbon that's created by David and Dale Smith at Smith Studio. Oh, nice. And they have a lot, of, they need a thesaurus most uncommon, most scary, <laughs> most creative. Oh. And so every scarecrow will get one of those ribbons kind of uh, explaining what it is. Uh, but then there are certain prizes not only given away by sponsors, but also a first, second, and third prize that are Geneseo Chamber gift certificates so people oh. can go and uh, sh support our local businesses as well. Yeah, this would be a good time to do that as well, just mm -hmm. uh, spend a day in Geneseo. So if someone's watching at home and they want to get in first on one. Scarecrow Row, how can they get involved to have one of their scarecrows shown? Yeah, so um, basically if you have a scarecrow already, Ready? Just come to the city park this Saturday, okay. October 26th, before 10 o'clock. And okay. from 10 to 2 is the trick-or-treating. Right. And if you need a free scarecrow frame, they're available not only at the Geneseo Chamber office, but also at Smith Studio and Gallery in downtown Geneseo. Okay. And there's just a small form with your basic information, what's yeah. your name, um, and how can we get a hold of you if you win a prize. And then uh, we let the fun begin on Saturday morning. Oh, my gosh. I love this. These are all so creative. Yes. Uh, and so for as far as the trick-or-treating is concerned, um, those are businesses that are going to be 
be set up that, that kids can trick or treat with? Yeah, so a business will create a scarecrow okay. and some representatives from the business will accompany the scarecrow to I help see. distribute candy. And this is a part of the small business community's give back to the community. Uh, all year, you know, and it never stops. We're always encouraging people to s support our small businesses. And this is a way that our small businesses step up and give back to the community. And it's really a win-win for everybody involved. Okay. All right, so the scarecrow row ends at noon, but we're gonna be having these on display a while after though, right? Yes, so the scarecrows will remain on display until 4 p.m. Okay. And that's just so people can go and casually stroll through the park and maybe enjoy the scarecrows without th all the craziness of trick-or-treating. I mean, there will be two to 3,000 people at the city <gasps> wow. park from 10 to noon. But then afterwards, the crowd slows down, everyone goes to our local restaurants to get a bite to eat. And during that time, people can take a stroll through the park and enjoy yeah. all the scarecrows with a little less craziness going on around them. Yeah, well, and if we are going for the trick-or-treating, of course, come in your costume. Yes. It, yes. It's, it's an opportunity to try out the costume before exactly. Halloween at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you must be so proud. I feel like Geneseo has all these events, and um, they're really ramping up, I feel mm -hmm, like. Yeah. You know, since we've been doing this show for not even a full year, I feel like we've got Geneseo on all the time oh, talking yeah. about something really great. And it's always an event that really draws hundreds, if not thousands of people. Yeah, um, things are going really well in Geneseo, we feel like, um, you know, which is kind of an anomaly in Illinois. You know, we always hear a lot about how things are so hard in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And Geneseo has a different story to tell. Positive and good things are happening in Geneseo, both with our economy and with our culture, with our community events continuing to grow. Yeah. I think people are figuring this out and then hopefully they look at Geneseo and maybe we'll consider developing there, bringing a business there or better yet, live in Geneseo, enjoy mm -hmm. and experience our community. So mm -hmm. things are going really good and I do appreciate your kind comments. Thank you oh, for that. Yeah, yes, of course. course. As a former Geneseoan, I That's uh, right. love that small little town. Mm -hmm. uh, went kindergarten through fifth grade there. Uh, always a great time there in Geneseo. So uh, back with the event, you're also going to have a free photo booth, Halloween themed, oh, yeah. themed photo booth. So bring your costumes and get a, get a nice family photo. Get yeah, a group together. Uh, yeah, we have Sarah D. Moranville Photography uh, doing the photo booth for us. Very nice. And so uh, families will be able to download the photos for free and that's thanks to our sponsors. The cost is covered thanks to our, the generosity of our local sponsors. Wow, that's super kind. Yeah, yeah, great to have all that support. Well, Scarecrow Row is happening this Saturday, October 26th, 10 a.m. to noon at Geneseo City Park. So wear costumes, collect candy from area businesses during that time. And of course, the Scarecrows themselves will be on display until 4 o'clock. So yeah. you can explore downtown Geneseo, come back and check out all the Scarecrows be a great time. all afternoon long. Zach, as always, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, have a ghoulish afternoon. <laughs> yes, you too. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> All right, well, after the break, the Rock Island Public Library will join us with several events and activities planned for this month, from a pay-what-you-want book sale to new after-school opportunities for the kids. You're watching Quad Cities Live. Well, it is officially a new season, and when it comes to new books or uh, events that you want to participate in, your local libraries have plenty of options. Yes, in fact, the Rock Island Public Library has a variety of services and events planned to keep you reading, learning, and connected throughout the yeah. fall. Lisa Lockhart is back with everything that we need to know about the library. Lisa, welcome back. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, we're so glad we to have you. You always, you. Yes, we do. You bring all kinds of fun things yes. for us to talk about. Uh, the library uh, just added a brand new service as well called Comics Plus. That's right. It's a brand new digital service. We already had a very robust collection of comic books and manga and graphic illustrated novels. Um, but this is an online uh, repository of okay. those okay. items. And so it's unlimited checkouts. Oh, there it is, yeah. Um, it's available 24 hours a day, even when the library building is closed, and it's available free to Rock Island Public Library cardholders. And kind of the important thing about it is it's three age-separated collections. Okay. So okay. there's a special collection for children, a special one for teens, and another one for adults. Wow, that's great. And you know, comic books, they don't always get the respect that a traditional book gets, but I mean, really, they should. They absolutely yeah. should. You know, it's just storytelling with pictures and words. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and really, they are just a known gateway to reading for fun and enjoyment and getting maybe someone interested in reading who may not be otherwise you gotta start yes. somewhere. interested. Right. It's yeah. a known gateway. And it builds vocabulary, comprehension. There's all sorts of good reasons no, why comic books should get their due. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we're also looking forward to a book sale uh, later this week. Uh, this is the final one of the year, correct? That 
That's correct. We do them quarterly, and so any later in November, December, we hit holidays, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so we, it is this Friday and Saturday. There's a lot of excitement about it so far. I brought a couple items that we oh, have, yeah. but there is so much more. Mm -hmm. That's these down here? Yeah. So we you can a, get a puzzle at the We book have sale? a huge rack of puzzles that are available oh, for awesome. sale. Oh, awesome. Uh, there are like there's a table full of like vintage items is uh, uh, brand new books and fiction and nonfiction and lots and lots of children's stuff too so it's just a big treasure hunt and the thing that I think is great about this one is that it's a pay what you want exactly yeah so not everyone has a lot of money you know we know the economy is tough for some people so this is a time to just whatever you can afford and, and you want to maybe That's spruce great. up your library at home you can right. come to the Rock Island library you stock up for winter reading yeah. uh, build a, a, a gift, uh, stock a little free library, you name it. We'd rather see people enjoying them. Sure. And actually, we don't have the room to store them. So yeah. <laughs> we hope to move them on. And yeah, that's 10 to 1 Friday and Saturday. Is it now, because you do this quarterly, um, has this been a, a pretty popular it book has. sale in the past? Oh, there are usually people lined up at the door waiting for it really? to open. Oh, really? I love hearing that. Yeah, and we're getting a lot of buzz about it on social media. So it should be a big one. Oh, yeah. good. We also brought uh, some items with you yeah. to showcase what else is new at the library. And uh, one of those things are new STEAM learning kits. Yeah, that's right. We got a wonderful grant from the Rotary District and oh, yeah. matching funds from the Rotary Club of Rock Island. Wow. And they uh, enabled us with some funding to really double the size of our STEAM learning kits for mm. young people. And so I brought a couple of examples. This one is a measuring kit for young people to yeah. teach them measuring and math. Uh, we also have a yoga for mindfulness, just lots of options. And wow. then as well as part of that grant, they funded sensory stands. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, at each location and it, we have replaceable bins that go into it and they're really for early learning. So that's like this? That's like that. Okay. And With that was one we had well. out in September. Oh, and cute. so it's Eric Carl's uh, uh, Hungry Caterpillar Kit. Yeah. Classic. Right? Love that yeah. One. And so it encourages sensory play and exploration in that very preschool <laughs> set that are learning so much just by moving things around. Wonderful. And playing. So, so it's free play. Free play and the sensory learning uh, stations there at all the library locations? They are, yes. And um, these kits can be checked out by anybody with an Illinois library card or. You can uh, take it home? You can take it home. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's for checkout and so it's uh, parents who are trying to work on skills at home or yeah. teachers yeah. it's it's just a great resource it for really science is. and well, math and Morgan I don't know about you but I mean I, I want to play with this sensory kit here but you know these are more geared to kids but <laughs> You know, there, there's plenty of other opportunities for adults to learn as well because the learning just never stops. It sure does, and, and we have a lot of ways to do that, whether it's by doing something or attending a program or reading a book or mm. watching a video. Okay, and you have um, a lecture series, speaking of attending a program, yeah. um, a lecture series uh, that you partner with Augustana College for, and that is starting up here pretty soon. It's starting Thursday, oh. tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. All right. So oh, there it is on the yeah. screen, okay. So that's our freeze lecture series. It's going on for 27 years wow. and wow. each year we pick a theme and the professors come up with four different ways to consider that theme um, and develop you know it's sort of college level lectures but yeah. without the worrying about your grades or whether okay. you finished your paper yeah I still have dreams should we call them nightmares oh gosh about <laughs> grades yes. and tests in college yes. um, so the <laughs> theme this year uh, we, we just saw it on the screen it's pretty timely it's democracy mm -hmm. in America but this is like these are nonpartisan lectures that's absolutely true. The library is a nonpartisan organization. Yeah. Um, but we are, you know, we support learning about your civic rights and, and considering different ideas. So this is about the concepts and ideas behind democracy, not particular candidates or anything else. Okay, sure, perfect. which obviously election day coming up here in 13 days. November going to be here before we know it. So while we have you here, let's talk about some of the upcoming yeah. events in November because your calendar's full there too. It sure is. You know, we think we're going to get a break and then we don't. <laughs> um, you yeah, look at the next month. I know. know. <laughs> we have family reading month coming up all during uh, November and we'll have a family reading kit that you can just stop in and pick up okay. um, and do some reading at home. Certainly we have lots of books. Oh, What's yeah. in a reading kit? 
kit. Oh, it has uh, some activities, like a bingo okay. card type of thing it can do. Oh, okay. We have a little flashlight, because you know if you want to read under oh, the covers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Um, <laughs> so that. with yeah. some games and activities that families can do together. And you know, family reading night has been a traditional thing in Illinois for years, mm -hmm. and it's usually practiced in the schools, but we kind of wanted to create an at-home kit. Yeah. extension of that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then elementary after-school programs, which have, um, I'm assuming, have already been underway, but um, these are gonna be Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for about an hour after school. Yeah, that's we've been doing it for a while. I think it started in August or September. Yeah. And uh, each month he has a different theme and he does four different activities throughout oh. the month. So each week is a different activity. Oh, nice. And it can range from a craft to like a upcycling to like a science-based thing. Thing. And then once every month, he has a book club, a graphic novel book club. Oh, actually. graphic novel book club. There yeah. you go. All right. And you've got a new movie series uh, starting out as well at the Midtown Brand. Yeah, let's go. The wacky movie series. So Ooh, it's a family wacky. family comedy. You know, every month. Um, and then we have a lot of mental health programming going on as part of this long-term focus we have on mental health and mental health awareness. Oh, very important. And yeah. so Quad City Arts is coming with a uh, speaker on music and mental health. We're oh, going nice. to do a NAMI friends and family seminar. That's great. Uh, we have a speaker coming to talk about memory health. Um, lots and lots of going on all the time. A jam-packed calendar as <laughs> yeah, usual. Most definitely. Well, Lisa covered a lot here, so if you yeah. want more information on what we talked about today, or if you want to look at the calendar of events for November and beyond, you can visit rockislandlibrary.org, or you can call 309-732-READ, that's R-E-A-D. Lisa, as always, yes. thanks so much for joining us. Thanks today. again. Thank you for bringing yes. everything. We appreciate it. Still to come on QCL, an opportunity this weekend to see Disney's Hocus Pocus like you've never seen it before. The Sanderson sisters are coming to the big screen alongside a live orchestra. The Quad City Symphony will join us next. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> You can't stop the things I do. I ain't lying. No! Just makes you want to watch the movie, doesn't it? It's one of the many memorable scenes of the Sanderson sisters in Disney's incredibly popular 1993 Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus. And you have the opportunity to see the movie like you've never seen it before. Here from the Quad City Symphony Orchestra, our assistant conductor, Hasham Bravo Groover, and executive director, Brian Baxter. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. Yes, this is so much fun. Um, so, Hisham, we'll start with you. This coming weekend, uh, we have the opportunity to see Hocus Pocus in concert. Um, so, for anybody who has never uh, been able to partake in one of these before, kind of explain all of that for us. Oh, my gosh. It's um, as immersive as you can get into in terms of watching a movie. I mean, obviously, we have the, the movie up on the big, state, uh, the, the big screen, yeah. but you have the whole orchestra in front of you playing the entire soundtrack to the movie um, and seeing the musicians interact with the movie and, and uh, you know, all of that is just really a truly unique experience. Yeah, it's not something I've certainly ever had the opportunity to do before and you also see you, you choose really great movies that already have kind of a cult following anyways um, with great soundtracks and that's like an even bigger draw for people. Really amazing. Um, so talk about everything that goes into it because we're seeing images right now from um, a previous Halloween show and uh, people are dressing up and things like that. Is that part of it? Yeah, it is. So um, we have a uh, trick-or-treat experience beforehand uh, with a bunch of community partners, uh, but people, the audience Look members come dressed up really, really, um, all, all their Halloween costumes yeah. from, from very young to, I mean, many adults come with their, their oh, Halloween absolutely. costumes. Oh, absolutely. And for this one, we know there's going to be a lot of folks dressing up uh, like the Sanderson <laughs> sisters <laughs> and uh, all the different characters uh, from the movie. So, so yeah. it's always really fun to see uh, how people come dressed. Yeah, that's great. So Pick your favorite witch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and didn't we all? I mean, 1993, <laughs> how old was I? I was in elementary school for sure. And when that came out, we all chose our favorite witch right, and, people right. and, and still to this day <laughs> I have friends who get in groups and dress up like the Sanderson sisters for Halloween and everybody knows who they are. Um, so uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, symphony orchestra specifically in um, where this idea came from to start doing these you know uh, f con film concerts. Sure so uh, I think it's been maybe 
seven, eight years we've been doing uh, live film, yeah. score to film concerts. And it's really a relatively recent phenomenon with orchestras as far as them, like every orchestra in the country does these now mm -hmm. and they're hugely popular. Uh, and it's just a really uh, incredible access point into the orchestral experience yes. uh, where you connect somebody, an audience member who maybe doesn't regularly or hasn't ever come to see the orchestra play with a movie they love and they realize, wow, like, you I can't like have, the orchestra. Yeah, I like the orchestra. <laughs> and you can't have the movie without the orchestra, without yeah. that music. Like, imagine, you know, imagine, insert your favorite movie, Hocus Pocus. Yes. Imagine it without the music and the, what that means. To, it really connects uh, the dots uh, for yeah. a lot of people. And, and that honestly was one of my questions mm -hmm. is it's got to feel really good to put this thing together and have a lot of people realize once they're there, wow. I would love to go back and see right. the QC Symphony again because that was such an incredible, immersive experience. I want to keep seeing, you know, the orchestra. Um, so that's really cool. So uh, Hisham, talk about uh, making sure um, and everything that goes into making sure that the movie and the orchestra really align. This feels like a big undertaking. It's a big undertaking and, you know, there are, it's a complex undertaking yes. so I won't go into all the details, <laughs> but in essence it is my sole responsibility to ensure that the music and the movie are lined up to the T, uh, and you know, in my uh, th that there's a lot of technology involved with that, and mm -hmm. it's it can, we can get really nerdy into it, um, <laughs> but you know, we won't we don't have the time to do that. <laughs> but it's very complex, and it's really actually a lot of fun yeah. um, to to put together. And I'm sh the musicians look forward to these experiences. To see it come together has oh to gosh. be like such an incredible feeling. Amazing. Um, so Brian, uh, what was last year's Halloween movie? We and what done, was the response? Uh, we had done Nightmare Before Christmas, and yes. it was a huge response, uh, full house, yeah. uh, and we're, we're expecting the same this weekend. Wonderful. Okay, so we want to talk about what else is coming up. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, so uh, that's not a movie experience. That is Correct. coming up, uh, I believe, it's t next weekend both. Is right. it Saturday and Sunday? That's right. That's okay, right. so... Uh, November 2nd and 3rd, yeah. Okay, so um, talk about what people can expect at this event. So the, the big thing we're doing is Midsummer Night's Dream, you know, the Shakespeare, but yes. uh, Felix Mendelssohn's music uh, okay. to it. And you might think you don't know it, but it, if you've heard the wedding march, the very famous mm -hmm. wedding march, that is from this, uh, this music from almost 200 years ago. Yes. And it's an incredible uh, work of music. And the really cool thing about it is we will have ballet quad cities joining us. So we're going to have dancers as oh, a part wow. of it. We have a small chorus from Augustana College. Uh, we have a couple uh, actors, narrators, um, and so there's it's a lot of moving parts. That's and it's, really great. You know, kind of visual and oral, uh, and, and that's just the that's the main event. But then we also have some music by Rena Esmail, okay. who's this Indian composer uh, from California, and she's fantastic. And one of the pieces has tabla, the Indian drums. Maybe you saw it on the, the yes. screen, um, and so th that's really cool and there's some other elements to, to her work that's yeah. uh, you know there's video involved in one it's not a movie concert there's a there's whole lot video. of components coming so, together for yeah, what did just I miss? another so, event you know, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah we like to keep it interesting like that yeah, yeah, like very, keep it complicated keep it complicated interesting. Yeah, um, and, and next month another cinematic concert that will of course be very popular yeah. um, it's the uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one in concert and I will say uh, and we're seeing some images on the screen right now um, the last time that you did a Harry Potter mm -hmm. um, film concert, I, I like did not stop hearing about it. People were so excited about <laughs> yeah, it. That's great. I mean, Harry Potter has such a, a huge following, anyways. It does. It so does. Um, this one, uh, Brian, is coming up in November, correct? That's right. That's right. The Saturday before Thanksgiving. The Saturday before Thanksgiving. Okay, and people can still get tickets to that. There's still tickets available, QCSO.org, uh, but they're. They're selling. selling quickly, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, a similar to this weekend as well. Um, this is a lot of fun. I mean, it's uh, you are um, doing something really special, I think, here in the Quad Cities by connecting these two things. Even the way that you describe, um, you know, in Summer Night's Dream, and you talk about some music, and you say, you've heard this song before. I think you really are doing a good job of giving people like point A to point B and showing mm -hmm. them why um, if you've never seen the symphony before, this could still be for you. Yeah. You know? And we have very low prices for all the programs. Yeah. I mean, there's the whole range of, of ticket prices, but the entry level. And if you're a student, 
we, you, you'll be able to come for free through one of our Amazing. students at Symphony programs. Amazing. Okay, so uh, let's get the website on the screen if you want to purchase tickets to really anything that we talked about today, any of the events, uh, visit qcso.org or you can call that number on your screen, 563-322-0931. Hisham and Brian, thank you so much for being here today. It was really fun talking to you. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, and good pleasure. luck this weekend. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so speaking of the orchestra, it is the mission of our next guest to make music more accessible to kids. Learn how when we get a visit from a Miss Heart of the USA pageant ambassador. And later, a preview of this weekend's eclectic market, now at a new location. We'll talk more about the variety of vendors involved. But first, there is a chance, uh, a change in the air, excuse me, temperatures, if you haven't noticed, have dropped and we are feeling more like fall. Meteorologist Kyle Keel has a look at our full forecast after the break. You're watching Quad Cities Live. Welcome back to Quad Cities Live. Our next guest is the current national elite Ms. Heart of the USA pageant winner. She's also been a music teacher for nearly 20 years and is using her platform to make music more accessible. That woman is Cher DeKaiser. She's here joining us in the studio. Cher, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. So much to talk about. You are doing so many amazing things and we want to share them with all of our viewers today. But first, uh, give us a little bit of your background and just talk more about why you enjoy Enjoy teaching music. I really loved music. I was told multiple times as a kid growing up I wasn't good at it, but I proved them all wrong. So that yeah. was kind of my exercise of this is why I love what I do. And when I became a music uh, teacher and I started teaching privately piano and voice, that's where I noticed there's a lot of other kids that got that same, oh, you're never going to be good enough. Oh. Well, now I get to be the one that says you're good enough. Yeah. And that's where I got the love of it. Yeah, that's and so sad to hear it. I mean, it <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm glad that you kind of overcame that because you are you are such a huge proponent for all of these kids now, um, and you have created something very special, um, which is a uh, like an activity scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. That's what you're calling it, correct? Yes, it's okay. called the activity scholarship fund. As I was teaching, I started noticing that some students were not participating in recitals, concerts, talent shows, okay. or they were even quitting their lessons, and it was due to cost. And that's where I started realizing that it need, needed help. So I'd squirrel money away, so if that ever happened, I was right there to say, nope, I got you this month, we can handle it, Wow. keep going uh, with everything, and oh, it has an entrance fee? How much? Let's see if we've got it in that uh, little savings there. And then I started developing it even more and more, so I had even more to help. And now it's kind of a, since it's more of like an activity scholarship, mm -hmm. it's not just your lessons, but it's also for anyone in the, um, that I'm associated with in the community that would need help with something. Wow, that's really special. So it's, um, it's something that's there for you know these kids when they would otherwise not be able to participate, which is just such a bummer, especially if when you're really passionate about something like you are with music, and you're kind of like, well, I can't do it because I can't afford it. So you have created this fund, and now you're working on making sure that it continues to grow and continues to help more kids. So you've been working uh, for the last several years, actually, with the QC Rock Academy. So tell Tell everybody about the QC Rock Academy and, and kind of what you are doing with them. I became a teacher at about 2020 with QC Rock Academy, so we all know what happened in 2020 with all we COVID. Do. <laughs> so there was a lot of students that were like, nope, we can't do this, we can't afford this because we're not working. Right. And so that was where it really started taking off with QC Rock Academy. They, uh, QC Rock Academy allowed me to do events like farmers markets, the Freight House Farmers Markets. You mm -hmm. usually can see us there once a month with students performing, yes. collecting donations. Uh, we've been down at the River Bandits creating awareness for it as well. And without QC Rock Academy, I wouldn't have gotten so many other venues. Uh, I was able to reach out to the Festival of Trees, and now I get students Wonderful. that to perform there as well. And no student has to say, no, I can't do it. I can't afford the ticket. Or you're doing this really neat production. I have a small performance group, and I had a couple of them say, we can't do it. We can't afford that. And I said, nope, I got you. The scholarship's there for you for that reason. Wow, amazing. So not only has you know your work kind of been able to put you in touch with actual performance um, opportunities for these kids, but those performance opportunities uh, seem to end up giving back um, to your scholarship fund. 
Correct. I usually find somewhere to leave a donation box or I will talk with others about uh, my Facebook page or they can reach me out and we can certainly uh, do donation wise. It's still on the smaller scale. Right. Uh, but I'm hoping to take it to the next uh, level where I can almost uh, award somebody a full year of lessons. Wow, that would be amazing. Okay, well, and that takes us to just last year when you de decided to compete <laughs> for a local pageant. Uh, this is the Heart of the USA mm -hmm. pageant. Um, so talk about your decision to do that because uh, reading about you, um, I was super impressed. It started out on the super local scale and then it's your national uh, scale at this point. I don't know, I don't think I'd ever could tell my younger self that I would be here right. one day. I don't think I, I'm still not believing it. Uh, what it started off with is a student of mine by the name of Erica, near and dear to my heart. She went for the Junior Miss Iowa pageant and I okay. said, okay, well, I'll help you out. If you help me promote the activity scholarship fund, she's like, sure, we could do that together. It was a wonderful bonding experience. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of fun. And then I came across Heart of the USA and they were doing a local in Dubuque, Iowa. And I was like, oh, there's somebody from my age. Yeah. I could do this. And so she really, Erica really pushed me to say, yeah, we could do this together. So we actually did the local together. And that's where it started really taking off where yeah. I got to talk about the Activity Scholarship Fund and took that local title in Dubuque. And then in March of 2024, I took the Iowa title. Wonderful. Well, um, congratulations. Thank you very much. On all much. of your success <laughs> and on, on starting this really amazing thing. And I'm sure in five years, 10 years, we are only going to see it grow and uh, see you continue to do amazing things. Yeah. Uh, if you want to keep up with Share and learn more about the impact of the Activity Scholarship Fund, you can follow along on Facebook. Just search 2024 Iowa Elite Ms. Heart of the USA Activity Scholarship Fund. You will find all the info you need there. Uh, Cher, thank you so much, and again, congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. It's absolutely, been a pleasure. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, up next on Quad Cities Live, the Eclectic Market is back this weekend at a new location, and we're learning more about it after the break. You're watching Quad Cities Live. For more than two years, vendors, excuse me, with unique jewelry, <laughs> handmade gifts, and art have gathered for the eclectic market. Yeah, and each market <laughs> is different and bring its own its own uniqueness. See, I'm struggling too. I struggle every day. Off the rails. Uh, but, but it brings all this uniqueness to those who attended it. Yeah. But the only thing that remains the same is obviously the organizer of the eclectic market. None other than Suzanne. 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 You're the organizer. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So this happens every month, last every Sunday month. of the month. But now we're at a new location and we're at Tiffany's in downtown Davenport. Yes, but sadly, with the Tiffany's, I've been eating a little bit more of her baked goods. <laughs> I was like, and I'm gonna ask like, Tiffany what's going right on? Now? You didn't tell us. Yeah. <laughs> To not sell me any more of her delicious pecan uh, yeah. bars. Oh, I or see. Get you. Because they get are you. addictive. <laughs> I've been sleeping um, in my dreams. I, I'm singing Pink Pony Club by Chapel Roan <laughs> and thinking of her delicious pecan bars. Oh, well. But that's, I that's love being down there. Have you? The space is amazing. It, it is. is yeah. I mean, it's really one of the best spaces, I think, in the Quad Cities. It's gorgeous. Where you can rent for private party as yeah. well. I don't know if many people know that. Yes, um, it is beautiful. And, and awesome. that's where you're going to be this yeah. Sunday. Uh, uh, Sunday on the big parade day. Oh, that's right. So you could right. go to the oh, parade yeah. okay. and then come down to the eclectic market, grab a cocktail or a mocktail okay. yeah. because you don't have to drink alcohol and uh, vend one of my 15 vendors okay. from Same. all over the Midwest. It's a little bit smaller than it has been in the past. Okay. Um, but that means I'm just going to have to curate a little bit harder. But um, this is all of my art that you see. It's repurpose, recycle, yeah. and so I'm really into that. So that nothing goes into the landfill, especially with the you know the shotgun shells. I get those at the Princeton range. Um, I just like to turn things into art if I can. That's beautiful. So yeah. all of this that you brought here today is your own art. This is my own art. This oh, wow. this right here, the cats. That's yeah. a real cat skull. Oh, oh. oh. Um, my husband or my son's husband is very good at breaking things. Okay. So when he breaks things, oh, I just uh, turn it into something neat. For example, Recycle this it. piece right here. Okay, this one right here. Um, this is my Scottish Highland bog series, um, and it's that is a muskrat skull. Oh. So um, okay. there's a whole story on it. Just different things. I you love know? it. 
things break, you can make something new about it. You can make art. So I'm also doing a class at Tiffany's on uh, November 13th. People can sign up oh, for okay. it. We don't have any information right now, but <laughs> look at Suzone.shop <laughs> or Tactic Market, and I'll hook you up. Um, we're going to do some really cool. I'm going to do a. Um, uh, some a decoupage. I was gonna say, yeah, some yeah. of the, the really cool, cool like jewelry boxes that you make and oh, things yeah. like that as well yeah. um, would be such a great thing to learn how to do. Yeah, you could learn how to do it, and then you could uh, you know the the boxes for stash boxes or for example, this is a um this is a recipe card box, and I've got oh. something for like Rock Island on it. It's oh, like, like cool! A I'm gonna hold that one yeah. up so people so can see what she's things. talking about. So I just different things, and like the dolls are gonna be for sale. Oh yes, uh, all the plans the plan I've done myself. <laughs> The and plants, you did all this yourself? And please come and get them because I am dating and if somebody comes to my home <laughs> and wants to date me, they're going to see these plants and they're going to flee. I'm going to um, tell you these are kind of frightening. So Yeah, we, almost, we love a good doll head, it's right? It's almost Halloween. <laughs> yeah. It it's is seasonal, Halloween. Yeah. But every day, like my Uncle Al says, every day is Halloween. Ministry. Oh. Oh, okay. Uncle okay. Al. Every day is Halloween, so yes. every day the dolls the yeah. dolls are well. In they're the right house. at my house. Well, but if something on this table is calling your name, you want to get down this Sunday yeah. because it's like we said, it's four. twelve to four this Sunday at Tiffany's. But each market is different, so s these items aren't going to be yeah. there for very no. long. These items they change. I make stuff so fast. Yeah, yeah. That's all I do. I never leave the house. I come out <laughs> once a month to sell my stuff, and then I go back in like a beaver. But the make uh, some more stuff. The other vendors that are going to be there, you really do work to have a variety of oh, people. Yeah. So. Um, um, what are some other things off the top of your head that people could potentially find? Beautiful jewelry, fiber okay. arts. Mm -hmm. Lolly Palooza is going to be there. Okay. I'm going to actually have Linda Crown over, and she's a doula. She'll be there talking to people about wonderful uh, safe her birth. services. Just different people, just things that I find interesting yeah. and different yeah. and unique. I say it's not your grandpappy's it's not. Yes. fair. No, it's not. Not at all. You I always talk about, you know, I've been before, and to come in and support you and um, you. the other folks that are there, oh, yeah. and we got to see a really Really cool spider up close. We're not having it. spiders. It's not there this, this yeah. <laughs> so you can come again. And then we I did will. have skunks. Skunks. Um, baby skunks. That's oh. adorable. I mean, yeah, baby skunks are cute. The yeah. baby Just skunks the were so cute. I really love that. That was from an artist in Des Moines called Greg Busnick. Okay. Who makes beautiful stuff. So. Well, well oh you can join gosh. Suzanne for the monthly eclectic yeah. market happening this Sunday, October 27th, noon to 4 at Tiffany's in downtown Davenport. Among the vendors, there's also going to be a DJ. Oh, and yeah. it is Miro free. The Hodge. Yes. And also, I'm giving away the deer skull. So oh, yes, this come thing and right sign here. up for the deer skull. Thank you. Awesome. Right. Suzanne, Suzanne, thank you. Thank you, Shanna. Thank you, guys. Thank I you love so you so much. Yes, yes. thank you, thank so, you much. so much for watching. Your news at 4 with Sharon up next. Have a great day. Have a great day. <laughs>